Hello and welcome to this VBA for Excel beginners tutorial. Today I will be covering one of the most popular uses for the macro recorder built into Excel, which is to help the user quickly sort misarranged data into a more presentable format. Now, if you followed the beginner's fundamental tutorial, you were briefly introduced to the macro recorder. The tutorial went through how to insert preset data into cells that are either fixed in location, that is, not dependent on the currently selected cell, such as this, or to insert data relative to the currently selected cell, such as this. However, the macro recorder can perform much more useful tasks than simply inserting data. One of these tasks is to sort data out. For this tutorial, I've created a custom workbook to demonstrate how the macro recorder can be used to sort data out. If you want to try this tutorial out for yourself, the file is available to download from this video's page at vba 4 excelcom I'm going to go ahead and open that file now. This workbook contains five variables related to ten companies. However, the data isn't in the conventional table format with the variable names along the top and the company names down the side. Instead, the companies are listed individually in blocks with their respective variables. So here we have company 1 and its 5 variables, and here's company 2 and its 5 variables, and so on for all 10 companies. Now, this format is quite awkward to work with, and it would be much more useful if we were somehow able to get the data into a more conventional format. Now, we could do this by copying and pasting the data into a more presentable format. While this may not be cu that cumbersome when we're dealing with only 10 companies, it would be very time consuming to do this for a workbook containing 100 companies, for example. So to make things easier, we're going to create a macro using the macro recorder to do the work for us. Now, to get started, I'm going to insert a new top row for our table headings. To do this, right-click on the one here and select Insert. We need table headings for the company name and the names of our five variables. So I'm going to select cell D1 and just enter company name. Then I'm just going to copy and paste the variable names from here and insert them into the adjacent cells. Finally, I'm just going to sort out the column widths by double clicking on the boundaries up here. Now that we've done that groundwork, we can get started with recording our macro. The first thing we're going to need to do is select the cell with the first company's name, which is Company 1. Once you've done this, go up to the Developer tab on the ribbon and select Record Macro. I'm going to call this macro sort data one. I'm also going to enter a shortcut key with Control Shift and A. Make sure this macro is stored in this workbook. I'm going to leave the description blank for now and press OK. Now that it's recording, the first thing we're going to need to do is turn relative references on. This is because we don't want the cell locations to be hard coded into our macro. To do this, click on the Use Relative References button up on here. It should turn orange, indicating that it is activated. Now, all we need to do is move Company 1's data into the right columns of our new table. For the company name, I'm just going to copy it from cell A2 and paste it into cell D2. Now, not only can we use Excel's macro recorder to move data around, we can also use it to change the formatting of data. So while the company name is selected, I'm just going to press Ctrl-B to unbold it. Now all we need to do is move the variables into the right columns. Now we could copy and paste them one by one as we did before. However, as the data is already in the right order we want it to be in, just vertically instead of horizontally, we can use Excel's transpose function to speed the process up. To do this, select the data from cell B4 to B8 and copy it to the clipboard. Once it's copied, right click on cell E2 and select Paste Special. The option we're interested in is down here called Transpose. Check the box and press OK. As you can see, Excel has automatically changed the data from being arranged vertically 
to being arranged horizontally. Now, the last thing we need to do is set the next company, in this case company 2. This is so that the macro is ready to be run again. Once you've done this, select stop recording from the developer toolbar. Now, we can use the macro we just recorded to sort out the rest of our data. To do this, cell A10 should already be selected. So all we need to do is hold down our shortcut key, which in my case is Control Shift and A, till the rest of our data is sorted. As you can see, our macro has successfully sorted our data into a more presentable format. However, you'll be able to notice that we have a lot of white space between our entries that we could really do without. So, let's create a more efficient macro by tweaking the method that we just used to create this macro. Firstly, I'm going to reopen this workbook as you can't undo the execution of a macro. Now, once again, I'm going to insert a new row at the top of this worksheet for our table headings. However, this time, I'm going to enter the heading starting at cell A1. So I'm going to enter company name into cell A1. Then, I'm going to copy the variable names from cell A4 to A8 and transpose them starting at cell B1 using the same method we used earlier. Now firstly, I'm going to set the first company's name, which is company 1 in cell A2. Then once again, I'm going to go up to the developer tab in the ribbon and select record macro. This time, I'm going to call it sort data 2 and share a shortcut key of control, shift and z. Make sure the macro is still stored in this workbook and press OK. Also, make sure use relative references is still activated. Now that the macro is recording, the first thing I'm going to do is set all the data related to company 1 from cells A2 to B8 and copy it to the clipboard. This is because later I'm going to be deleting these rows to get rid of the white space problem that we had in our previous attempt, but I still want to keep a backup of this original data. Once you've got it copied to the clipboard, go down and select Sheet 2, right click on cell A1 and paste the data. Once it's pasted, go down to cell A9 and select it so the macro knows where to paste the data related to the next company, and then go back to Sheet 1. Now all we need to do is move Company 1's data so that they're under the right headings. Fortunately, Company Name is already in the right cell, so all I'm going to do is select it and press Ctrl B to unbold it. Now, all I'm going to do is transpose the variables data from cells B4 to B8 into cells B2 to F2 using the same method as earlier. To get rid of the white space problem from our first attempt, I'm going to delete rows 3 to 9. To do this, click on the 3 here, hold down the left mouse button and drag to the 9. Then right click anywhere in the selected area here and press delete. Once it's deleted, select the next company name, which is company 2, and then go up and press stop recording. Now, if we hold down our shortcut key, which in my case is control shift and z, you will see that the macro will sort our data into a much more presentable format. Also, if you go to Sheet 2, you will see that we have a backup of our original data. That's all I wanted to go through in this tutorial. I hope you found it useful, and check back for some more tutorials from vba4excel.com. Thank you.